Chapter 4, Effective Communication in Various Situations. Formalities and appropriate greetings are usually expected when meeting someone for the first time. This includes light-hearted greetings, such as an agreeable discussion around a neutral subject. This introduction can serve as an icebreaker and help build rapport. Remember, a polite disposition and friendly demeanor are much more likely to encourage rapport than a blank face or an indifferent response. Show you are invested in the conversation with active listening. What do you think active listening looks like? Is it A, mirroring what the sender expresses after each point, B, keeping the conversation going to show you are interested, or C, thinking of ways to relate the topic to you so that you have something to say? The answer is none of the above. Active listening is all about concentrating on the main intent of the sender's message. Active listening requires being prepared to listen, avoiding as much as possible both external and internal distractions, such as a noisy atmosphere or an internal dialogue, delaying judgment until the speaker is done talking, being objective, and not focusing on one or two information points at the expense of others. After you've received the message, reflect and paraphrase the information back to the sender. Reflecting is a useful skill because the sender can verify if the message was clearly understood. In the same way that first impressions influence the overall communication process, the way a communication is closed or ended can determine how the information will be remembered. For instance, ending the conversation too abruptly may not allow the receiver to process the message, but letting the process go on longer than is wanted can likewise create an awkwardness, which can strain communication. If presenting live, be aware of where you place your devices, especially if they can be noisy. You don't want to distract the audience from what you're saying. Be aware of proper use of language in context to the cultural and subcultural environment. If recording the presentation for a later time, remember to speak in the context of where and when your presentation will be played. Here are some specific tips on video chat etiquette. Before beginning a video chat session, ensure that the webcam, chat software, and internet connection are set up correctly. Technical problems during a chat cause frustration and impatience for everyone involved. If possible, connect the hosting computer to a wired internet connection prior to the session to eliminate the chance of loss of connection due to wireless interference. And last but not least, always conduct video chats in a professional environment. Let's discuss some tips and pointers for properly handling technologies that utilize the written word. When sending emails, never type messages in all capital letters. It's perceived as shouting and can be considered rude. Use bullets, asterisks, or bold formatting for emphasizing points. Provide an appropriate subject in the subject line. Check and correct spelling and grammar errors before sending. Use the blind copy, also known as BCC option, when sending an email to a large group of people. When something could be potentially confusing, if feasible, discuss it in person. Both texting and blogging are like email, so many of the same rules apply to these forms of communication. However, due to the informality of texting and blogging, sometimes casual language or abbreviated words are more acceptable. No matter the communication medium you use, know your audience and what is and isn't appropriate.